Welcome one and all, I'm John Zadar, this is On Top and Hot, and it's Monday, June 10th. Tomorrow, June 11th, I invite you to a live streaming event that I've been invited to. Eric, the host of Buffalo Fireside Chats, has invited me onto his show for a live streaming event tomorrow, 6.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. He likes to talk to CEOs. I'm sure you've seen his interviews. He gets a lot of great information out there for us. He also likes to trade penny stocks. And since he's an influencer, I'm an influencer, we thought it might be interesting to just get the two of us together. Now, he and I have talked a little bit, but honestly, not much. So this is going to be a novel event, just as much for us as it is for you. And it is going to be very casual. We're there to talk about penny stocks, but there could be some cursing. There could be some intoxicating substances involved. So it is going to be a fun time, and we invite you to be there with us. That's 6.30 p.m. tomorrow, Tuesday, Eastern Standard Time. Now, if you haven't seen my show before, what I like to do is share due diligence with you on a hot penny stock. I trade penny stocks every single day. These are stocks under five bucks, and you can find those stocks on every single market. And I am constantly looking for a stock that has heat, that has potential to make us money. And I do believe I've got us one. This is We Touch Technologies, ticker W-E-T-H. This is a Chinese company working over in China. They just made a deal here recently with a very large company in Japan, working in Japan, but also working globally. There's a lot of heat in that news. But it was the chart that caught my attention. There's heat in the chart as well. She is right up underneath that 200-day SMA looking like she's ready to jump. And if she can get on top of this, I think we could get a really strong push. So, We Touch Technologies, W-E-T-H, finished today at $2.53, and we're getting aftermarket activity. She's still climbing. We are now over 40% gains, over 41. She is on the NASDAQ. She has got a transfer agent verified. You normally don't see those green ticks on the major exchange stocks. But this is a concern here. Prohibited service provider. Now, what exactly is this? Just click on that button and it'll bring you over to the definition so you can find out quick and easy. The prohibited service providers list includes attorneys, accountants, auditors, investors, relations firms, and other service providers that have been convicted of criminal activity. Well, when we scroll down here, we get the rest of the information. Their auditing firm is their prohibited service provider. This is BF Borger CPA. Now, if you've been keeping up with the news, you're probably already familiar with this. This was back at the beginning of May. The SEC charged the audit firm BF Borgers and its owner with massive fraud affecting more than 1,500 SEC filings, which I believe covered about 300 different public and private companies. I've already come across some public companies that were used in this firm, and they've had to find new auditors. This company's going to have to do the same thing. And of course, they got a stiff fine for doing this. The company themselves got a $12 million fine, and the owner of the company got a fine to himself of $2 million. So let's take a look now at what this company is all about. We're going to jump around to a few different pages, but not their website. A lot of it is in Chinese. Some of it's in American, but it's broken English and it's really tough to read. So I found information from different places and we'll start right here. We Touch Technology is a Nevada company and is currently engaged in the manufacturing, sales, and servicing of medium to large size projected touch screens through its indirect wholly owned subsidiary, Sichuan We Touch in China. The company specializes in large format touch screens, which are developed and designed for a wide variety of markets and industries, including financial, automotive, industrial human machine interface designed for industrial applications, point of sale, gaming, lottery, medical, human machine interface, and other specialized industries. Now, I found an article here in English, most of it. <laughs> this came out March 11th. We Touch Technology Inc. successfully uplists from the OTC to the NASDAQ, which is a big deal for a Chinese company. It's not easy to do with all the oversight the Chinese government has on these companies. 
On February 21st of this year, We Touch Technology achieved a significant milestone by successfully uplisting from the OTC market to the NASDAQ capital market. This success case serves as a valuable example for China concept stocks seeking to make a move into the U.S. market. As a leading enterprise specializing in advanced touch technology solutions, WeTouch Technology makes and sells large format touch screens used in the financial, automotive, point of sale, gaming, lottery, medical, and other specialized industries. In 2023, the China Securities Regulatory Commission, the CSRC, issued new regulations increasing the challenges for China concept stocks in the U.S. market, requiring registration and other procedures for China companies listed overseas. However, as a domestic enterprise, WeTouch's successful listing did not require registration with the CSRC, thereby providing new ideas and possibly for other China concept stocks. WeTouch's successful uplisting case demonstrates a new uplist strategy and possibility, especially for China concept stocks uplisting to the NASDAQ in the U.S. Due to its unique status as a depository receipts company, WeTouch not only successfully uplisted, but also avoided the cumbersome registration process with the CSRC. Now, I think that's a big deal, though I don't totally understand it. What it sounds like to me is they're getting away from all the manipulation from the Chinese government. Not completely, but they have found a path where they get the least resistance from the Chinese government. And that is always good if you're going to be on a U.S. market. Now, I've got more information I'm going to share with you, but we're going to jump back to it after we look at the stock right now. So what was the relative volume around WETH today? Good. That's a nice jump, right? Over the last 30 days, she's been doing about 141,000 shares a day. Today, she jumped up to just under 800,000 shares, going to 789,000. Share structure for WETH. Oh, please be low. Oh, man. Yes. I had not looked at this before, to be completely honest. Outstanding share count is almost 12 million. Whoa. Let me refresh that. We don't need all that yellow. Almost 12 million. Insiders own about 6 million, which gives us the other half, 6 million. We have ourselves a legitimate low float. Anything under 10 million is a low float. Anything under 100 million is a good float. We got ourselves an excellent float. Market cap for WETH. Currently, we're at about $21 million. Financials for WETH. Let's see what we got going here. Over the last four years, um, she's jumped from 31,000 up to roughly 40,000, which is where she's been hovering, or not 40,000, million. I know it's millions and not thousands because there's three zeros up there I got to use. I just forgot. So 2020, we were at 31 million. 2023, we're at 39 million. And we were hovering in between those two during COVID. Coming down to our quarterly reports, ooh, nice jump here from 2.5 million to 13, 12, 11. Ooh, what the heck happened there? Roundabout Susie, where we started is where we ended up. I don't know what happened here, folks. We were losing money a year ago, not making a lot of revenues. Got those revenues up for the last three quarters, making profit. And now they've fallen all the way back down to $2.3 million with only $120,000 worth of profit. I'm not sure what's going on there, but I know things are going to change. Balance sheet for WETH. Well, by golly, they got a lot of money in the bank. They got about $98 million. Total assets. About 120 million. Woohoo! Look at that. Total liabilities is only 6.7, which means this company, though they're not making a lot of money and only a little bit of profit, has a lot of stockholder equity, at least for a penny stock. We got $113 million down here. That isn't bad at all. Let's take a look at our disclosures for WEF. All right, we have, oh, we have an NT10Q. That's an abbreviation. That is actually reading, we are not filing our quarterly financial on time. They're going to be late. Quarterly financials, when you file late, will get you five extra days. They filed this on the 16th of May, 
Ooh, they're really late. This isn't good, folks. If they're too much later, <laughs> too much late. If they're late for too much longer, they could easily be contacted by the NASDAQ and be threatened to be kicked off of the NASDAQ down to the OTC if they don't get that in in time. And they are definitely late right now. Uh, they are closing in on 30 days late. We got an 8K here. That I would have thought went with the uh, financial, but I don't believe it did. Ah, changing accounting firms. Can you blame them? Of course you can't blame them. They've got to. And then their most recent financial came out in April. That is their annual report. If you want to know about the company, if you're really interested in what's going on, don't run around the internet. You're not going to find a lot of information in English. Just jump into that 10K, which is really exciting here. Again, this is a foreign company, but they are registered in Nevada. This is a Chinese company, right? There's no doubt about that. Ah, come over here, it tells you. Chinese company, right there. Though their website is coming out of Germany. I don't understand that. But over here, we're getting 10Ks instead of 20Fs. 20Fs are the financial form for foreign companies. 10Ks are for normal companies, domestic. We're getting 10Ks here. I'm liking this the more I look at it. So as I was saying, if you want to do research on this company and stick to English, dive into that 10K right there. You'll get as much information as you need. All right, jumping into that news now. I have gone back here to February 20th, 2024. This is the day they uplisted to the NASDAQ. They also started a public offering for $10.8 million. Eight days later, they closed the public offering. They sold all the shares, got themselves $10.8 million to do whatever they want. Jumping over a piece of news here. This most recent piece of news is about that 10K, their annual report I was just pointing out to you. And the piece of news I want to focus in on where all the heat is coming from. Oh, yeah. This came out March 18th. We Touch announces strategic collaboration with iDeck Corporation, elevating presence in Japanese touch display market. They tell us here that iDeck Corporation is a globally recognized leader in automation solutions dedicated to creating innovative products that connect people and machines in Japan, though they are working globally. With a diverse portfolio of automation equipment and a steadfast commitment to excellence, iDeck is shaping the future of automation technology worldwide. Now, this is the piece of news that came out March 18th. They tell us here that WeTouch has forged a strategic collaboration with iDeck Corporation, a distinguished leader in automation equipment based in Japan. IDEC's dedication to creating solutions that bridge the gap between people and machines aligns seamlessly with WeTouch's mission to deliver cutting-edge technology that enhances user experiences across various industries. With a shared vision for advancing human-machine interaction, the official partnership between WeTouch and IDEC represents a significant milestone in the evolution of touch displays. Now, as I was saying, this company is big. They do a lot of things. Primarily from what I've seen, they are creating switches, all kinds of different switches, switches you hold in your hand, remote control, joysticks, touchless switches on the wall that you can just wave your hands in front of. They have got uh, switches that are built into robots, so if you get too close to them, they automatically stop moving. They got switches built into these platforms that go up and down for construction users. It'll automatically stop before it crushes you against the ceiling. So this is what they do. But they make a lot of different types of products. I've got to figure they have more than a thousand products. They have a lot of products that they are selling in a lot of different places. Now this company's been around for 70 years. They came out, I believe it was in 1942, 1945, somewhere around there. And being a Japanese company, they operate a lot like the government does. Over here, when a president comes into office, he's got a plan that is planned for four years. Then we have another four-year plan after that, and another four-year plan. Well, the Japanese work on 20-year cycles, and that's what this company does. They make these huge, long cycles that they're working with. And right now, they've got one for two, uh, 2033 and 2050. Now, the company's been doing really good. 
but the CEO is not happy. This is a letter from the CEO, and there is a lot of information here. You can go through this and read it at your leisure. I'm going to jump into just a few things that caught my attention. As I was saying, 2023 was a record-breaking performance year due to favorable market conditions and our efforts to improve profitability. I am quoting the CEO now. However, I am not satisfied with our current level of performance. Our group has rapidly globalized since acquiring France's APEM in 2017, with more than 60% of our core product sales now coming from overseas. Going forward, we will further expand our business globally, with the aim of raising the overseas share core product sales to 80% or more within 10 years. Now, I got a lot of information from this paragraph. The company's working with a lot of different companies. They're working with Wellcat, Tokyo Senses, uh, uh, the one we just read about, Amp, I think it's called. Well, down here, I found they're working with more companies in more countries. They tell us here, we will advance HMIX by proactively developing new products through our joint venture with Alps Alpine and providing solutions that combine our safety equipment with the products of our French partner, Easy Wheel. Turning to our regional strategies, we are working to expand our sales in the high growth potential markets of Asia. For example, in China, we are stepping up local manufacturing to serve local consumers. Meanwhile, in India, we are pursuing strategic partnerships and other opportunities that will enable us to strengthen our sales channels. We are also considering ways to support our future business expansion through collaborations in production and other operations with our factory in Thailand. So we are here in Thailand, India, China. Uh, we're in Japan. I mean, the company's in a lot of countries. I don't know if we've covered them all. We have covered a few different companies here, Easy Wheel, Alps Alpine, and when you come back here, not there, <laughs> you come back here, you can see up at the top of the page, APEM, Tokyo Sensor, Wellcat. So the company's real big. They have a lot of help from other companies. They have a lot of products that they're selling. You've got to imagine that they're making strong revenues. They are. This is their most recent brochure that just came out. You can dive into this if you really want to do some research on this company. This is 74 pages long, and I'm only looking at one page. I'm looking at the revenues. They've got a lot of different divisions, but when you add up all the revenues together, in 2023, they did about 84 billion yen. How much is that? That's over a half a trillion dollars in U.S. dollars. So they are doing very well. It's a big company that WEF is now working with. Their touchscreen capabilities are being worked with with this Japanese company who is working globally. I expect distribution to explode now, which means revenues should start to explode now. That's why I'm excited about this company. I think it is going to take off and I think the chart's in the right place to do it. You doubting me? Come on, let's go take a look at that chart. All righty then. Let's do some charting on my free trading platform, Think or Swim. We are looking at ticker WETH. This is We Touch Technologies. And I got this opened up to a six-month, four-hour view. It was six months ago in February, we had our 52-week high of $8.20. Then we had a big drop and a continuing of fall to a low in May of $1.13. Now, I've taken the liberty of putting up a support and some resistances here. We've got one support at roughly $2.07. That's just in case we dip. You never know. Right now, we're at about $2.40. My three resistances. I've got one here at roughly $2.60. $3.20 and $3.70, just ballparking them. So we had a huge fall off of this 52-week high from $8.20 down to $3. We did have some jumping and bumping through here, but for the most part, she was just going sideways until March when she took another dump. Now, I looked around to see if there was any reason for this. I didn't find any news. I didn't find any filings. I didn't think I would. 
Why? I think the 200-day SMA is the culprit. It just came on the board right there. And when did the price start falling? As soon as it came on the board. I tell you this over and over again. When a new SMA comes on the board, in most cases, the price will gravitate to it. And it doesn't matter if the price is above it or below it. It goes to it. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to stay there. It may go right back to what it was doing. It may stick. But this looks more than coincidental to me. She crushed that 200 with a lot of velocity, went right through it, down onto that strong support of $2.07. And for the most part, she's been going sideways. She took a dip, fell down here to our 200 haul. That's that purple blue line here. She went underneath that and then ripped off of the 200 haul directly to the 200 MA. Then she fell back down to our 200 haul. She did a rubber ball dip. What's a rubber ball dip? <laughs> well, think of a rubber ball going into the water. What happens when it goes into the water? Immediately it shoots back out of the water. I mean, it shoots. Well, that's exactly what happened here. She went under the water and shot back out. Big tall bars, tapping the 200, jumping onto our nine day escalator, crushing the 200 and going through. Hitting this strong resistance here of $2.56 before she pulled back. Now, I want you to pay attention to everything I just showed you there. We had a bounce off of our 200 haul all the way to the 200 day SMA. Went through every single MA to get there. Then it fell through all of them, came back down to the 200 day haul. And what did it do? Again, it bounced directly to and through the 200 day MA. This happens a lot, folks. I tell you this over and over again. Penny stocks really respect the 200 haul, and they use it as a springboard to jump directly to the 200-day SMA and through it. Over and over again, we see this. And the 200-day haul, it's a lot like your 200-day SMA. It has as much authority and as much power. It does the same thing as the 200-day MA, it takes 200 days of prices, averages them all together, but then puts more credence on current prices. So you end up with a different long-term line on your chart with the same authority as the 200-day SMA. This is looking like a breakout setting up right now. And look at our volume. Our volume is getting stronger and stronger with today being the strongest. Oscillators are looking pretty good. Every single one of them is climbing except our RSI. That's taken a wee bit of a dip, but it's still in the overbought, way up there at 73. Let's come on down now to our 20-day, one-hour view. Well, what I see immediately is a trend change. Our 200-day SMA was falling, and now it is climbing. We have another bounce off of our 200 haul here, and where did it go? To and through the 200-day SMA. Are you getting this, folks? She came back down, bounced off that 200, hit this strong resistance, came down underneath the 200, and she ripped, bouncing all the way up. And we know what caused that bounce, right? The 200 haul over on our four-hour chart. Oscillators on our one-hour chart are looking great. Our PPO, percentage price oscillator, is climbing. MACD is climbing strong. RSI is pulling back a little bit, but it's still on fire, and it's in the overbought at 70 plus. Coming down to our five day, five minute. All right, so we were underneath the 200 here, dipped down to that low, came back up to the exactly where she was, and continued falling until our bounce off of the 200 on the four hour chart. Looks like she's not bouncing off of anything here, but we know where it's bouncing. Got up over that 200, and she's gone. Went through our first strong resistance at 209, it looks like. Hit the second one at 260. She's pulled back, and she is right there at her 20. Hopefully, she's going to bounce off her 50 like she did right here. That's a long ways to fall back down to the 200. But I don't think she'd fall that far. If she went past a 50-day SMA, I think she'd just come right back down here to about 210, 208, whatever that one is right there. Our oscillators 
All right, these are the coolest they have been. Aftermarket, she has been falling down a little bit. She hit about 261 and came down to 239, so she's fallen about 21 cents. And all the oscillators are a bit cool. The big thing here to me is that we haven't had any new news since that big piece of news in March. So I'm expecting something to start happening here. These companies are working together and this is hot technology and they're selling in a lot of countries. So I'm expecting something soon. No promises. I don't know anything more than that. I would suggest you do some more due diligence, folks, on both companies. I would stick to the 10K for WETH. As I said, most of the information online is in Chinese. The other company, there's information all over about that. Remember, the more you know, <laughs> the more you're going to grow. See you, folks.